Love Zazelle. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I have been gone for a little while and um, and I wanted to tell you um, where I've been and a little bit about self-care for people in general and also for people that are caregivers of sick, of the sick or of, you know, children or people that are sick. Um, so today is not going to be a normal video. We will be back to all of our regular videos soon. I'll explain to you why in a few minutes, but um, a lot of you guys have reached out recently and have given me such kind words of um, encouragement and positivity, prayers, love, light, uh, suggestions, recommendations, things of that nature, and I'm just... I'm so eternally grateful for each and every one of you guys. I'm also grateful that you guys have stuck around with me. I know I've been gone for about two weeks, um, but that's a long time for me. I'm a little bit of a workaholic. I find a lot of pride and joy in what I do, and it takes me out of my daily life, and to not have that over the past several weeks has been difficult for me and I just appreciate you guys standing by me. So if you guys have not watched my other two videos about my daughter, uh, please go back and watch them so you know we can, what I'm talking about. But um, I just wanted to let you know where we were at. It is, we are, um, what's today? We are basically a week out of being out of the hospital, almost exactly. Uh, my daughter went in for her EMU stay, which is Epilepsy Monitoring Unit. If you don't know, my daughter has epilepsy. And, uh, you know, throughout this whole time, and we've been dealing with this since she's two and a half, she's just turned five uh, last month, and we finally got to the stage where she might be a surgery candidate, and so they let us come into her, or let, uh, let us come into the um, EMU, and that's where they basically stay in from between five to seven days and they pull them off their medication and they honestly let them seize. Uh, I was not excited about this process. I never want to do it again, but <clears throat> it is absolutely necessary to decide whether they are, you know, the, the person is a surgery candidate or not. So before this, though, she had her neural psych exam, which went really, really well. She's perfectly normal, and everything looks good there, so that's fantastic. Uh, neural psych is basically where they um, measure how she's developing, if the seizures are bothering any parts of her brain, um, if they also can link some of the disabilities they might see to a certain part of the brain, etc. Those are no big deal. It's like she played games for four hours and learned and stuff, so that was no big deal. Um... I can't remember if I told you guys or not, but her PET scan, she had her PET scan and it came back. Oh, I did tell you. I did tell you what it is. Okay, anyway, there was like a, a scar like on her brain on the right side and they thought that might be where her seizures are coming from. So anyway, fast forward to us in her EMU stay. We were a week seizure free before we went in and we were, um, I finally was in a really good place for the first time in many, many years. And we went into the EMU, we started pulling her meds back on Friday, we went into the EMU on Monday, and um, she had a little bit of meds on Monday, and then Tuesday morning when we woke up in the hospital, um, she didn't have any. And it was a really scary experience. Uh, the first one she had, nobody even knew. So by the way, if, if you guys are going into an EMU stay, um, what they do is they hook you up or hook whoever you're going in with uh, up to an EEG. Obviously, that's no big deal. If you're going into the EMU, you probably have had your fair share of uh, EEGs on. Then, <clears throat> then, which is one of the hardest parts for my daughter, is they give you an IV just to make sure that they can uh, insert rescue medication or medication in general. And then they uh, put you basically in a room that you can't leave with the camera on you at all times. And you're left to your own devices. So she had her first one um, in the morning time uh, when she was drinking and nobody even knew and she didn't even know, so that was interesting. Then she had another one a f like an hour and a half later. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, I'm just like all over the place with my allergies and emotions and stuff. Um, and then she had her, her second one, which was completely normal. It was like her normal one, okay? The, then 
um, maybe an hour later, not even an hour later, um, she had a huge one. Now, she doesn't have convulsive seizures, um, but she has pretty aggressive focal seizures, which I didn't know, which I know partly could be because of how quickly they pulled the meds off. I, I don't really quite understand it. I don't know if like she's capable of having those types of seizures or if that was just because the meds were being pulled off so quickly. I don't quite know, but hers was pretty big. Um, it was absolutely heartbreaking to watch her do it. Um, it was almost eight minutes long. She like pulled to the right and it was, she was just out of it. Like she, it was horrible. Um, they almost had to give her rescue meds. Um, but the epileptologist was in there. It was scary. Uh, then she came out of it and then she slept. And then while she slept, uh, they gave her new meds because they said, that's enough. We don't need to see any more. Okay. Thank God. And, uh, so we were only in there for like three and a half days. And that's a lot shorter than most people. Uh, the doctor did a fantastic job on not pushing it too, too far. Uh, I do think we kind of woke the beast up a little bit <clears throat> with, with that situation. Um, they basically came in and told us that, unfortunately, her seizures are coming from both parts of her brain. So both of the frontal lobes and then one was, her big one was from back here. Um, she, when she was two and a half, she had viral encephalitis and viral encephalitis commonly attacks, um, up here on the lobes, both of the, the front lobes. And that's what happened to her. Um, I was pretty devastated by the news. Not that I wanted her to have surgery, but then that was like a path, right? That was somebody giving me, you know, like, this is what you do. These are the next steps. So her epileptologist came in and said, you know, basically there's nothing really more we can do for her except for monitor her, keep her on her meds. Um, she's still on her two meds and, um, that's basically it. It was, it was, it's just one of those things. That's why it's taken me so long to come back besides a couple other things. But she did give her a 50-50 chance of growing out of it, uh, somewhere between seven, eight, and puberty. So uh, a lot of times for girls, hormones can either make it worse or help it quite a bit. So unfortunately, I mean, fortunately we have answers. Um, unfortunately, there is nothing we can do at this time. Now, I will say for me, I, I trust medical professionals uh, quite a bit, but I do think that there are other things you can do to support and help situations that you're going through, okay? So what we have decided to do is we have our keto consult, which is next week, and we will, they, they want to start her on the MAD diet first, which is a modified Atkins diet, and see how she does on that, and so we're really looking forward to that. Um... It was, it's been a past, it's been a tough past couple of weeks because there was definitely an uptick in her focal seizures when we got home. I mean, she was having several a day and we, we haven't experienced that in years and that was stressful. And it's, it's like my PTSD came back all over again and I couldn't leave her. Um, I had separation anxiety if I had to for a moment to go to the store. Um, I was barely sleeping. I'm not eating. I wasn't eating. I'm still not doing great. Um, but um, over the past couple of days, it's gotten better. We did have to up one of her meds and, um, but she's been doing really well so far. So we're hoping that that trend continues and we'll see how that goes. So I'm sitting here editing the video and I just noticed that I never talked about some of the alternative things we are doing for her. And these might not be for you, but it might lend something that you might wanna look into. Um, these are definitely alternative medicine ideas, okay? So bear with me here. So she sees a natural path, so we're obviously working on her supplements. Uh, she takes fish oil, CoQ10, vitamin D, um, a methylated B12, and then a vitamin C. Uh, we're also going to be working into some sort of GABA, um, but her natural path hasn't gotten there yet with me. I, I have to go in and see her. 
She also sees a chiropractor once a week. Um, she's been seeing a chiropractor for a while and we've now worked down to once a week. She actually sees also a practitioner for FMS, which works on inflammation in the body. It's actually something that a lot of pro athletes use to bring down inflammation and that's what was in her brain. And I, I personally feel like she still has some inflammation in her brain. So she gets that done weekly. She also sees um, a healer. So um, she does ener energy medicine with her and energy work with her to help kind of heal the whole body, mind, spirit, as well as physical body. And then we are looking into just CBD, no THC, um, but a CBD alternative. Uh, along with her medication, her doctor has said that we can do CBD. She's on medication that does not interact with that. If you are considering CBD, please talk to your doctor first and make sure that you aren't on any medication that's going to be um, hindered by uh, adding in CBD. Uh, I know that's a very controversial topic, but we've kind of gotten there now. I actually had a beautiful person email me and talk to me about a water-soluble CBD, and I've been doing a ton of research on that. So if you are watching, uh, thank you so, so much. I greatly appreciate it. I won't say your name in case you don't want to be named on camera. Um, but we're also doing alternative stuff like that. And I just want to let you know that for us, really making sure that we're um, being cognizant of the whole body, mind, spirit, uh, using Western medicine along with alternative medicines. I feel in my heart um, that she will be healed fully and that she will be the 50%. So I just wanted to bring that in because I forgot to talk to you about the video, um, talk about it in the video. So, all right, let's go back. Um, I haven't super uh, allowed myself to really feel the situation, and I'm just being completely transparent with you guys. So, um, and I'm sorry, it's such a downer of a video, but it's just the truth. I, I really, I'm just tired. I'm tired of, um, of being, of both of us being a victim to this. I'm tired of it. I, I mean, I'm thankful that our situation is a lot better than most, but I, I'm, I'm tired of being at its mercy. Um, I'm tired of, her, of, of, you know, I mean, she's not as concerned as I am, but you know, I'm tired of thinking about it constantly. I'm tired of it debilitating me in a very severe way. Um, you know, <laughs> I just, yeah, it's tough. And I, Really, my heart goes out to all of you that are in any kind of situation like this or similar situation or a completely different situation but feel the same way. Um, I feel you. I hear you. I see you. Um, it is a horrible situation, but I, I, I don't know. I've got to believe that there is some sort of plan and that she will be that 50% before it was 10% when they thought she had something else. So, dude, I will take 50% over 10 Um I, you know, she's on a bunch of you guys' prayer lists. She's on, you know, my parents' prayer list. So keep that going. We really appreciate it. Um, and just keeping all that kind of positivity coming towards us and hoping that it, you know, fades away. And it's just a story we tell one day, right? So for me, and then one of the things I wanted to focus on in this, you know, this video is what self-care looks like. Because I have been told over and over and over and over again. Make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure you take care of yourself. Self-care is important. Taking care of yourself is taking care of her. Like, I totally get that. I've given that advice to other people. Like, I get that. But when you're in this situation or in a situation like this, it is so hard to even have the energy to do any of that. Do you know what I mean? Like, Self-care should usually look something like making sure that you're getting enough sleep, making sure that you're going and taking, you know, walks for yourself, making sure you're doing some sort of maybe meditation, um, maybe you're doing some stuff that makes you feel really good, you know, eating well, um, really taking care of yourself, right? I've been doing none of those. <laughs> um, my self-care has been hardly even washing my face, honestly. I, I can't even bring myself to do that. Um, so, but I mean, it's getting better over the past couple of days. So what self-care looks like to me, and if it looks like this to you, just know that if you're not doing all these perfect things, like going to the gym and, oh my gosh, I didn't eat very well today. And I, you know, I had, a, I'm going to make sure I eat sa salads and really rich vegetables, which I know you should. I just don't want you to feel bad because I'm like, 
dude, this version of self care is, is I can't, I don't have the mental capacity to do it. I just don't, I don't, I don't have it. Um, I don't have that mental capacity to, to do all of these things. Okay. I'll get there and I'm working on it. So what my self care looks like, and it might inspire you to take these small steps is, um, sometimes <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, Sometimes um, at night after she goes to sleep, because my husband travels a ton, um, I might just sit there and stare. <laughs> like just stare out the window um, and just be. Because nighttime is a safe time for me, thank goodness. Um, she's asleep, I have a few hours, and so I sometimes my self-care is honestly just sitting there and staring and not doing anything. Uh, recently also to, um, you know, talking to people. It's been also self-care for me because I isolate when this stuff happens. Like I shut down. I, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm tired of talking about it. And I just want to crawl into my little shell of a family. That's what I call hibernation. And I isolate, which I know is not healthy. I, I, I totally understand. But I don't want you to feel like if you do isolate, that it's a bad thing. Just make sure you got to come out of it though. Okay. And that's what I'm doing now. I, I've allowed myself to hibernate. I've allowed myself to isolate for a small period of time. And now it's time to move forward and, and no longer be a victim to this. Okay. So I hope that encourages you to take the time you need, but make sure it's not too long and, and, and then come out of it and find a way to start healing yourself. Um, also to self care for me has been, um, really trying to spend as much time with my husband as possible. He's my best friend. I love him to death. I mean, he's just one of my favorite people in the whole entire world, if not my favorite person besides my daughter. Um, because sometimes caring for a sick person, uh, as much as time as you want to spend with them and make sure they're okay, and especially with epilepsy, you just it's so unpredictable and, and anxiety ridden. And you, I, sometimes I need a break. I need a break from that, which I haven't had, but I'm working on it. I also went back into counseling, and that has been amazing. Um, I actually went today. Um, I think that's why I'm not a bawling mess right now on camera. I also got back into my supplements. I'm starting to take my supplements again. I'm starting to get my B12 shots again, which make me feel amazing. Um, and so that's the little self-care that I have been doing. Um, I also have been listening to music again. I found it was so weird. The other day I turned the radio on and I, it was a song I really liked and I kind of turned it up and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, you haven't listened to music like for months and months. And I'm a music person. Like I've been on stage since I was two. I've danced since I was two. I've sang since I was eight. Like I'm a music person. Like that's me. And, um, I just turned it on and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this feels so good. It, it lifted my spirit. So whatever music that is for you, uh, and if that's something that resonates with you, um, I like turn the music up so loud in the car now the past two days, and it's made me feel a little bit better. I kind of get a little groove in my step and, and, and that type of thing. Um, but I was just, it, I would get in the car and it'd be silent. And I just would be like in my own head and just constantly thinking, 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 thinking. Um, I also have not been doing great on eating and that is a big no, no. Okay. So obviously not eating, you, it, it wreaks havoc with your body as well as your mind. I wasn't thinking clearly. Um, so I'm doing better now, but this is, by the way, this is not sponsored. I found this on Instagram and I really love it. Okay. So this is a company and I don't even know how to say it. Um, is it, it's a P uh, R E S Apris. And I love these drinks. So these are, it's a, it's 14 grams of plant-based protein. The reason why I got it was because when we do keto with Gray, she can't have a ton of dairy. Um, so I was going to try to see if there's a flavor that she really likes and, um, we're getting her there to see if she'll try it. But this is 14 grams of plant-based protein. This also has three grams of MCTs and then five, uh, electrolyte minerals, five different electrolyte mineral minerals. Um, this is dairy free, gluten free, soy free, and 100% vegan. And these are not necessarily um, meal replacements. They're more of like snacks, rehydrators, because it's made with coconut water and for the electrolytes. But I've been using it sometimes as a breakfast like replacer or something when I just know that I should be eating and I don't feel like it. Uh, and there's only 150 calories in here. The sodium's a little high. But, um, the, let's see here, the, and, but the sugars are five grams, which I don't think it's too, too much. And it does have, uh, some fiber in here a little bit. So 
the and the carbohydrates are a little high, especially for Gray. But maybe she could have one one a day. They're eight grams of uh, carbohydrates. So anyway, um, yeah. So I just wanted to share that. If you're looking for a way to try to get some nutrients and some hydration, I mean, I wasn't even drinking water, to be honest with you. I mean, any time that I was separated from her, like when I started taking her back to school, I would just like lay on my bed and do nothing. So that's what self-care looks like to me. And it's going to grow every day and I'm going to get better at it and better at it. And I'm going to get to a place where I was before, where I was actually going to the gym again. Um, I was actually washing my face. I mean, I am washing my face, but... Sometimes at night, eh. but I'm not having, I haven't worn makeup in two weeks almost. Oh wait, I wore makeup two, a couple days ago for a, a podcast, but that's it. Um, like I'm getting my hair done next week. I haven't had my hair done in months um, because I've been putting it off. So like little things like that. Now I have a friend who um, I actually met who has, her, her son has epilepsy as well and she has two other children. So this is a little bit different for me because I don't have any other children and I have a little bit more time. But it's like for her, her self-care is doing like her nails um, at home and crocheting. And, um, you know, she's also looking for a therapist as well. So that's, that's what I'm saying. So it doesn't have to be these big things. It can be these small things like, you know, crocheting or making your favorite, uh, you know, recipe or sitting and staring at a wall for a half an hour or an hour or whatever it is. Um, just listening to your favorite song, uh, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's going to be whatever is going to try to pull you out of that dark space and try to keep you moving forward. Because we can't, and I know, and I'm not the best at this, but we can't be stuck in this place forever, even though it feels like Groundhog's Day every single day. I mean, it really does. It feels like Groundhog's Day every single day. Um, and we, we all got to find our own way of getting out of that. So I do want to read you this quote. I have a girlfriend who has changed her basically her whole life recently she used to be a groomer uh, which is a men's makeup artist that i worked with she's a very good friend of mine who now lives in new york but she's basically changed her whole complete life and um i want to read you something okay and this really resonated with me and i hope it does with you it may seem like a small thing but when you get up in the morning and face your fears you are participating in the redemption of the universe when you refuse to allow yourself to be paralyzed by the uncertainty of tomorrow and set forth with courage and faith, you become part of creating a new world, a better world, which there's a whole post that goes along with it. And it, and it just talks about, you know, peace doesn't come. Uh, peace does not come when you finally have control over your life. Peace comes when you no longer need control. You cannot control your circumstances, but you can control your character. You cannot control the actions of others, but you can control the choices you make. You cannot control the outcome, but you can control the process. I just love that. And she says, it's from a book from, it's called From the Way of the Warrior by Aaron Raphael Mac, uh, MacManus. I'll put it below. And um, I just thought that was so beautiful. I've read this every single day since I found this because it is uh, important to me that I am no longer paralyzed by this situation because she's not i mean my daughter is a freaking rock star she is like strong vibrant vivacious does not let anything hold her down this she could give you know two flips about this this thing happening to her i mean she has one she moves on but if i internalize it and i make it out to be a big deal then it's a big deal to her so i have to be really careful about controlling my own emotions around her as well of course she's seen me sad of course she's seen me worried of course she's seen me hurt and all of these things it's not like i'm hiding my emotions because that's not good but i don't want to be this overreactive every time she has one that makes her feel like oh my gosh i'm so sick etc so i hope that that resonates um, with you and uh, brings you some sort of peace to know there's another one I want to kind of leave you with, and I would love for you guys to comment in the comment section below and let everyone else know your um, self-care 
things you do because maybe one of those things will really help somebody else out there because my whole point of doing these things a is to show you that not everything you see on camera on Instagram or on social media is the way it really is it's not shiny and glossy all the time and it's not all beauty products and skincare all the time you know this is real life this is real situations and you are not alone and you have people that care about you and love you and I just I just want to let you know that you're not alone okay all right, so I'll leave you with this final quote. I found it on Instagram. I don't know who it's by, so if you do, please comment below so um, we can give that uh, credit due. The quote is, heavy is the crown, and yet she wears it as if it were a feather. There is strength in her heart, determination in her eyes, and the will to survive resides within her soul. She is you, a warrior, a champion, a fighter, a queen. I love you all so, so much, and I'll see you on the next one.